The controversy over the electronic transmission of results was laid to rest when the Senate voted in its support on Tuesday and left it to the discretion of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Is this a victory for Nigerians? And what does this mean for future elections? Joining us now to speak on this is the spokesperson of the Youth Party, Ayodili Adieu. Ayo, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to be here. Good to have you. I mean, this sounds to a lot of Nigerians that, oh, it looks like there are achievements, you know, good news, uh, things are being done. Uh, the government, the Senate is listening to people, particularly the youth. Uh, do you share that, you know, enthusiasm that it looks like there's a bit of electoral reforms and that we might enter 2023 elections on a good note? Let me start with the Senate. Um, first, I, I see a lot of people commending the National Assembly for doing what was right. But um, I think it was a 1989 classic by Fela Kuti when he said, you can't give me human rights. Human rights is my property. Um, the same thing, the Senate cannot give INEC the powers to conduct elections. INEC had always had um, the powers to do so. Section 78 of the Constitution makes it extremely clear that you know they had the powers to register, um, to conduct and supervise elections based on their direction, same as Section 160 um, you know, of, of the Constitution. So um, what they have simply done is, is to bow to pressure. It never was in their place in the first instance to determine whether or not results were going to be transmitted electronically. INEC did not need their permission to deploy it in a do state. They didn't need their permission to deploy it in Ondo state. So what was the um, frenzy all about when they decided um, to vote against in the first place? But having said that, I, I think it's a, it's a remarkable step in the right direction in our electoral process because it makes it extremely difficult um, for you to manipulate or tamper with results that have been um, gathered, especially at the polling unit level. Um, because many people usually, when I listen to the argument that it doesn't really make a difference, I laugh because it means you haven't run an election before. <laughs> because in several occasions, um, even the last concluded elections in Lagos State that my party participated in, um, when we got to the coalition center, the results we had on our sheets was completely different from the results <laughs> that were in the coalition center. Which so, one? The, the 2019? Uh, no, the just concluded Lagos um, local government elections. Oh. Right? So if it was transmitted <laughs> electronically, we would not have been shouting at the coalition center. <laughs> right? So I think it's a, it's a good step in the right direction. And um, it, 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 it tells me that um, the 20 elections might be a lot more free and fairer than and if we continue to put pressure on, mm. on INEC mm. um, and the National Assembly to do the right thing at the right time, I think we might just have um, you know, better elections in 2023. When you talk about better elections in 2023, I'd assume you're talking about uh, making sure that people who are eligible to vote actually do come out and vote. So, uh, you know, as we've discussed on the show for a while, voter apathy has continued to be an issue that has marred a lot of uh, different ballots in different parts of the country. With this decision uh, in terms of the electronic transmission, do you think that that will jumpstart uh, a level of, I guess, lethargic people who hadn't been really feeling energized to vote? Do you think that this would make an, uh, an example uh, of that? I think you touch on a very important point, voter apathy. Um, you can see the numbers consistently drop um, you know, over 20, um, so when elections 2011, the numbers are consistently yes. dropping. It's even worse in Lagos, where we have um, less than 17% turnout um, in elections. So over 5 million people sit down at home on election day. Uh, but there are very, so many reasons to explain um, voter apathy. And I, and I give you two or three very quickly. One is that um, the way registration is done, especially for young people, because, I mean, um, more than 60% of the eligible registered voters are young. But the problem is that by nature of being young, it means that you are somewhat socially mobile. And what I mean is, um, when you're young, you move from university to NYC. From NYC, you get a job. Um, you get promotion in your job. You can move from Ikotun to Ikeja. Um, but what that means is that your polling units have been moving. So if you registered um, to vote when you were in University of Benin in Uniben, and you're in Lagos when an election you know, is holding, you're going to be playing football on the streets. Um, so by that very nature, young people are disenfranchised in many elections and they sit down at home, uh, not because they don't want to vote, but because their polling units are miles away. And when they even try to change that, it becomes extremely difficult. The other thing is the continuous voters registration process. I don't, in fact, as a party, we don't even buy the idea that it should be happening in seasons. 
Um, because what it means is that um, you can disenfranchise millions of young people before an election because they had turned 18 two years before an election, right. but they were not registered, right? right? So you, you consistently disenfranchise young people and you make it difficult for them to participate in the electoral process. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to open it um, all year round for people to... So when you turn 18, you can simply walk into an office and register to vote, right? So, and of course, um, election violence and election malpractices makes it extremely difficult for people um, uh, uh, to come out and vote. And, and that's talking about apathy. So you need a systemic, a entire systemic reform and to build the integrity of the electoral process before you can guarantee people um, to come out and vote. But as we speak, the voter apathy works for um, a set of politicians. They like it that way. And we must continue to fight to ensure that we open that space. Otherwise, they would have their hold on power. Okay, okay Adelie, I mean, um, I don't know if youth party will be part of the Anambra election, you know, next month. Or win uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we won't put you in the spot. <laughs> but, but what I'm trying to say is that at least I like, you know, I like reps have been here a, a number of times. And part of what they said, uh, you know, is to address, you know, some of your concerns, particularly for Anambra, which will be um, uh, a springboard for um, Ekiti next year and then Oshun and then, you know, the elections in 2023. To say that uh, they, won't, they don't want to be regimented, they don't want to say because you registered three, four years ago, uh, therefore it's where you registered that you have to post. So they want to, you know, um, uh, streamline it so that people can change. If you, if, if you are no longer in Lagos, uh, 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 if you register in Anambra, you live in Lagos or, or you live in Enugu or something, you know, they, they want to make it a lot easier. So I'm hoping, just like you said, yes. that, you know, there's a systemic reform, yes. you know, that is necessary. But yes. beyond that, uh, I caught something very interesting in what you said. Uh, when you, you know, leave school, when you graduate, when you do NYC, blah, blah, blah. That unit of the youth population is very small. Majority of those who will go to the polls stay there and refuse to, you know, those who will say that we want our votes to count probably didn't go to university, probably didn't go to a polytechnic. You know, are probably traders, you know, artisans, you know, um, NURTW, etc. The youth party, are you, are you averse to bringing on board that large pool of young Nigerians, but who don't speak like you, who didn't go to school like you, mm -hmm. but who determine, you know, yes. who, 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 who becomes what, especially at the local government level yes. that you made reference to? Let me to. just quickly even, you know, correct that, because many people always think that, um, you have more educate. traders and more um, <laughs> NUR people in there. <laughs> the 2019 data completely proves that wrong. The highest voting demography was students. 22 million registered voters were students. 22 million. That was the highest voting demography in the country. It was, million? yes, 22 million students. It was two times more the amount of traders that we talk about, which is about 10 or 11 million. Student, two times student, the amount. Students of so where? Students Students have the highest amount of voting block, according to the 2019 the data, together, 22, 22 million. million. So that means, what that means, unfortunately, if you looked at the campaign What's trail, the carrying capacity of Nigerian higher institutions? The carrying capacity? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know the I'm, entire I'm trying to see okay, where You're trying to see the... No, but if, if you check the data from INEC, you see it clearly. 22 million. Wow. Right? So the, the question is... You had political parties or, or the major political parties campaigning without articulating a clear policy for students, mm. without articulating a clear policy for young people, right? And then you don't speak to these people and you expect them to turn out and vote for you. It's absolutely not going to work, right? So, and, and as a party, that's why we have started to communicate exclusively, uh, extensively to that particular voting demography. Yeah. I mean, it was shocking for me also to, reveal, to, to notice when I saw the data from INEC. And you would think that by the stroke of a pen, young people should determine the outcome of the elections. <laughs> but the reality is that the old order, the old order have won elections by collating votes from a specific demography of people, which you have mentioned, yeah. the NURT, the traders, and all of that. <laughs> the reality is that that demography is aging, and they are not replacing themselves. So a man who is an NURT member, his son does not replace him there. He sends his That's son true. to school. That's the true. trader in the market, her daughter does not replace her there. Right. She sends her daughter to school. 
So that demography is aging and the opportunity is on the other side of the aisle, yeah. right? And so we are communicating to that demography because it's their future that is on the line. Um, it's their future, um, you know, that's been mortgaged by a political elite um, that has only mounted debts on them, on their future, that has not given them infrastructure, that has not given them quality education, that has not created meaningful jobs for them, um, that has left them in poverty and in penury. Um, so the alternative is that these young people have to align behind the political party um, with a vision, mm -hmm. with a mission, um, to transform uh, their future and to give them hope. Because the most important thing is for young people to have hope in their country and hope in their future. And that is what we're merchants of hope. And like you said, are we even reaching out to those people there, uh, there the NURT, the, we're like a religious center. Just come in and get whole. <laughs> we're, 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 we're a religious center. Whether, whether you, are, you are brown, no discrimination. you are no discrimination. It's a religious center. Come in and get your healing. It's, it's, it's open for anybody <laughs> old. The name might be Youth Party, um, you know, but it doesn't discriminate whether, I mean, you could even join the parties. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, so, we'll give Steve time to ponder that during this very short break. Please do stay with us. We'll be back. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still joined by the spokesperson of the Youth Party, Ayodele Adio. Adi, I mean, it was a very, very animated <laughs> break we just had just then. First, we were fact-checking <laughs> the 22 million statistics. And, and I'm a potential member of the Youth Party. <laughs> and Steve, too, is a potential member of the Youth Party because there are no age restrictions youth, there. Right? <laughs> exactly, you are. <laughs> if we circle back around to electoral reform, and still about the updates that came out in the news uh, this week. You know, in addition to ELEC, the electric transmission of results, there was also INEC talking about exercising power to conduct primaries for different political parties. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that that's an overstep? Um, I, I think what they were saying, first, they wanted to remove, or they're proposing to remove indirect primaries. They want to make it um, direct. direct primaries, yeah. um, which means every vote counts. And, you know, no, as a no party... De no delegates. Yeah, uh, no delegates. And as a party, we've always advocated for one man, vo one vote and very strong internal democratic processes within political parties where every member of a political party um, would have the right to vote in an election. Um, so, so for us, it's really not a problem per se um, if, if we go through direct primaries. Um, of course, many will argue that you should leave um, political parties to be guided by their internal constitution. Um, that's another argument to be held, but I think that um, internal democracies are very important. And it's, it's a pointer um, to how, you know, um, the larger elections turn out. Unfortunately, what we have seen, uh, permit me to take a small, um, if, if you look at the elections, for instance, uh, the direct primary um, elections the, in Lagos State, um, the, the current governor, um, you know, had you know, close to 2 million votes in the direct primaries. Um, Amber, they got about 800,000 in the direct primaries. On election day, they, they were struggling to get, um, you know, 1 million votes. The governor won the election with 700,000. So where did you get 2 million people within your party to right. vote for that election? You know, the same thing in their senatorial race. Um, it was declared that 155,000 people, um, you know, affirmed the process for the senator to get into the Senate. In election day, they had less than 80,000 votes, right? So, except you strengthen internal democracies, you continue to have um, uh, 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 magic numbers being banded around, uh, you, know, uh, you know, across our faces. Let every member of a political party, and when people say young people should go into political parties and, and, and cause reforms, it can never happen except, you know, primaries are direct in these political parties where every vote counts and not a delegate system that is organized by powerful people within the political party that will determine the outcome and the direction of whatever election. So I think it's, it's um, we're not averse to it. We've advocated for one, one person, one vote is the way to go. Um, but I can say I can understand the argument on the other side who say, let us be governed by our party's constitution. And in fact, the current constitution allows for indirect primaries. primaries. And it's even clear because there are procedures of electing delegates um, that are supposed to represent uh, various constituencies in an indirect primary election. The problem is, um, you know, Nigerian politicians, we never obey anything that is on paper. And that's why, for instance, like the Anambra election that you said, um, the court declares this person the right candidate for Abga the next morning. It's, it's because people don't follow 
the, the guiding principle of their own party constitution, neither do they even like to follow the federal constitution. And that's usually the problem we have. Um, if you follow simply your constitution that allows you to do direct primaries, I don't think you would have any problem. So, so for us, like I said, we're not averse to it. Um, we welcome it. Um, but again, like I said, I can understand the argument on the other side. Well, I mean, I also don't have a problem with it, but I worry uh, why that has to be um, a point of legislation. You know, um, every time when you have the American election, uh, people query the, uh, what, what, what do they call that thing? Uh, uh, the, the electoral college system. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have a president elected uh, who wins more number of the, states, especially the key states, yes. and then loses, loses the, yeah. popular, the, the popular, popular vote. vote. Yeah. And people are like, no, this is not my president because, yes. you know, my, my. so um, the problem that I have with this legislating how parties should conduct their primaries um, is precisely the point that you raised. At the, at the direct primaries, figures are banded, you know, yes. 2 million, 1 million, yes. blah, blah, blah. And it didn't just happen to the government, it happened, you know, even to the president. Yes. Um, but at the main election, where everybody is supposed yes. to vote, yes. not just your party members, yes. then you have the barely a quarter <laughs> of the figures numbers, that you yeah. have. Don't you think that those who are worried about money bags buying delegates are probably not very rooted in party politics? And for me, I, I'm not so sure if it's just, I, I, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I totally support uh, di direct you know, primaries. But I'm saying that when you legislate it, you, 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 you hamper the party yeah, in I, the I, democracy. Yes, again, that's why I say I, I totally understand the argument on mm. the other side, which is you don't want um, INEC legislating for political parties. Is as the, long the as assembly now? yes, as long as um, as long as the party's constitution exactly. is in tandem with the, with the with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which yes. means that um, there's internal democracy within the party. There is consensus in whatever you do, and you're following the, the tenets of your own um, you know constitution. So um, to that extent, I would agree. I would, I would, I would, I'd make sense of your argument that yes, you don't want INEC legislating. Um, on that particular provision. Um, but, but, you know, like I said, for me, I think we need a process where um, there's a lot of participation at the grassroots level, where people can determine the politicians, um, where people can determine the choices. Because what happens is the political parties present to us the choices. So you always have to choose between two, two yeah. le less of the two evils, if you'd like. Um, because it has been determined by an internal process that was delegate driven, a delegates that were controlled by certain people within those political parties that would spring up their particular interests at the top. However, if you had a more democratic process mm. um, where people could vote and say, okay, this is the person we want to vote in a primary election, mm. like, like it happens in the US elections where people vote across um, uh, the states, yes. ordinary party members, then we might be able to have a variety of, of, of um, politicians who have different ideas, mm. who probably um, have a lot of integrity and character. But at the moment, um, the system is rigged in favor um, of those who have amassed power and wealth and will continue to recycle a particular political elite um, at the top. And you'd have nothing to do. And, and that's why, let me just say, and that's why I laugh when people, when people think that... Um, because INEC, what it seems to do is wants to sh shrink the amount of political parties in Nigeria. Um, the Senate committee they, chairman... They do not have sufficient national spread. Well, again, that's another debate to be have. Uh, Kabiru Gaya said he wanted to shrink political parties to just five. And it's quite laughable that a politician is saying that he also wants to shrink the political spaces. It's laughable. Um, but I, I see that Nigerians don't... Um, the argument has been sold well by INEC. And the mm. argument is that you know, the, the sheets are long. That's why it's, it's, the sheets I mean, are long. Are. You know, well, that's they, why and they it, costs them, it costs them more to print. I mean, those are very lazy arguments, in my opinion. Um, if the alternative is that we're going to become a two-party state, and the two-party state is going to be the PDP and the APC, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, I'm on the streets across the country every time, uh, whether it's in Lagos or in Kanu or in Gombe or in Sokoto, um, when I'm speaking to members of our party and when we're engaging communities, people want alternatives. 
people are Definitely. tired of the status quo. Um, and I, I, it just, I mean, I don't... You, if you, this I, was an alternative... Exactly. Vote. And people have a right to vote wherever they want. I'm just exactly. saying that people want an alternative. You can't tell me that I must vote for these two part political parties. If, if, and, and again, the, the point about uh, whether they have national representation. A political party does not mm -hmm. need to have national... You, you, you might want to be a political party that caters for a Tiosa local government. You are passionate about your, your local government here and you want candidates to run for councillorship elections. Mm -hmm. And that's all you want to participate in. You, don't, you might be a political party that does not want to go outside Lagos. Um, you want a better Lagos and you want to compete in Lagos. I'll have what candidates. What the party is trying to do? You know how oh. you took the words out of my <laughs> <laughs> No, the youth party is a national party. Mm. Okay. Um, but we're, 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 we're biting the elephant one bite at a time. Mm. Um, we focus exclusively on local elections, councillorship elections and local government elections. Um, and just a few state house of assembly elections where we have candidates um, that are rooted in those particular constituencies. Yeah. Um, we're not peaching for president, you're peaching for governorship. Maybe that's what we'll be doing you don't think um, can win. In, in, in 10, 12 years from now. No, we're very pragmatist. Um, we're, not, we're not here for the fanfare. I, I, I like that. We're yeah. not here for the fanfare. Yeah. We're, we're a serious political party. We have plans um, to grow over it, but we're not a flash in the pan. We're going to be here for 30, 40, 50 years. Uh, and so what's the hurry? Right, so should, should, um, should we remind you when you leave the party for the <laughs> <laughs> green party? No, 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 um, activities a political party should engage in. That you lose an election does not mean um, you go to sleep as an opposition. It doesn't and mean that's that you are why, rejected. Yes, and that's why we consistently put out policy ideas um, uh, every quarter, whether it's on the economy, um, we have one on the bold revenue plan that seeks to, um, that, that makes a counter argument of how we can reduce our debt burden how we can manage our revenue crisis, and how we can create jobs for young people. So yeah. as a political party, we are constantly putting out alternative ideas on how to, 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 to better govern our country yeah. and to move our nation uh, forward. And I can guarantee you, um, you know, that as long as we are committed, as long as we are still consistent, um, in another 10, 15 years from now, we'll be, we'll be competing at the highest level. And I ensure that um, once we get into government, whether it's at the state or the federal level, um, I, I'm sure that the policies and the programs that we have in place will, will turn around our country for good. But at the moment, we're competing hard at the local level, uh, whether it's councillorship or local government. We're competing hard at state house assembly seats. Um, and that's where we believe we can make the you, you tangible you had, you difference. You a brilliant now. lady along the lecky axis. Oh, yes, Tari, 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 exactly. Tari Taylor, yes, who, who, it, no? who ran a brilliant... Yes, we, we, in fact, we're in, we're in court yeah. um, because um, the elections were fraught with a lot of irregularities <laughs> and we're challenging the elections um, okay. um, in court. And, and I'm glad that you remember. You remember her because she brought a, fresh of, a breath of fresh air mm. to, to local politics True. in, in Lekki. And, and that's what we intend to do across yeah. the country. Like I said, we're merchants of hope. Um, we're selling hope that the future of Nigeria is bright, um, that there are people with alternative ideas, and that there are people who are committed to the growth and development of their nation who think beyond themselves, um, who don't think of just themselves and their families, um, who are thinking generationally um, and not in election cycles. And, and, and I think that's important for our country. Mm. So you're definitely yeah. playing the long game there. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely focus that on the long sense. game. That makes sense. Yeah. Long term plan. Did Don't forget Adios. to send your form. Please. Because, <laughs> you know, I fall well within the youth category. Thank you very much for joining us. It's Thank been a you. great conversation. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure so to be here.